بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may the peace and blessing of Allah be upon his servant and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as to what follows my dear respected brothers in Islam Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Insha'Allah Ta'ala, today we'll continue off from Qawlihi Ta'ala, Inna Yawma Al-Fasli Kana Miqata. And last week we began with uh, Surah An-Naba, which is the first Surah in Juz'a Amma. And we explained at the beginning how Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala is illustrating and depicting His anger and His disgust at those who disbelieved by the word Yatasa'alun. What are they asking one another about? And uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions, or He says that they're in argument against one another about this great day, Anil Naba Al Azim, about the great day, the day of judgment. And He says that they are mukhtalifun in this day, they're all in disagreement upon this day. Everyone's got his own theory about what's going to happen at the end, and then they're not even convinced about what will be happening. And then Allah says, كلا سيعلمون ثم كلا سيعلمون. Verily, very soon, كلا, we said means stop, stop running your mouths. Very soon you'll come to find out the reality and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stored for you. But what's very important for the discussion today is to just recap on um, كلا سيعلمون ثم كلا سيعلمون. And uh, let me just see if you can still remember. We said, the first kalla sayalamun is pointing to first an, a foreign event. And the second one is pointing to another event. So he can tell us what's the first one. Death, Yawm al Qiyamah. The first kalla sayalamun, when is the first reality that will hit them? The first reality will be on the day of judgment. And every person's day of judgment is when they die. And the second one, Thumma kalla sayalamun, is when. When they're in front of the hellfire. That's the second reality they'll know. That's the second time they'll find out that this, this was serious stuff that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu were speaking about in this world. So now we move on. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, Alam naj'al al-arda mihada all the way to wajannatin al-fafa. Here He was depicting His mercy, illustrating His mercy, speaking about His mercy, and what was the whole point of all this was that compare what you've made to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made. So for example, Alam Naj'al al-Arda Mihada, we said the Mihad is a bed and comfort and peace and tranquility is associated with a bed. And that's how the Arab would use the word Mihada, the cradle of the baby, the womb of the mother, the bed. This is what you've created. Compare it to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. He's actually made Al-Arda Mihada, the earth as a comfortable and resting and, and a final place for you to, to live on. Alam naj'al al-arda mihada wal jibal awtada so on. What's happening in the verses is that compare what you have made to what Allah has made, what Allah has created. At the end it doesn't compare. So now you're put in your place. Once you've been put in your place and you understand how mankind is so weak, you know, we created you in pairs, male and female. You weren't even capable of choosing your own gender. The night comes, you can't even get rid of the night. The, the sleep is a cutoff. You can't even stay awake 24 hours. It's a, it cuts you off from your soul and cuts you off from worldly affairs. Now you've been put in your place. You understand your role in this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the issue of An-Naba Al-Azim again. This Anil Naba in Azim, the same news that you're in disagreement amongst each other and you're consistently waging sarcasm at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the believers, now Allah readdresses the issue after putting you in your place. He says, In Nayom al Fasli kana miqata. Verily, certainly no doubt about this, that the day of separation has already been appointed. And a couple of things here, Yawm al Fasl. And we know the Day of Judgment has many names that are mentioned in the Qur'an. At-Tamma, At-Sakha, Yawm Al-Talaq, Yawm Al-Talad, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, 
Al-Haqqa, Al-Qari'a, so on. But Allah mentions Yawm Al-Fasl, indicating that it is the day of separation. It's a day in which you disbelievers, now you're as a group, on that day you'll separate. There's, you won't find anyone that will support you in your claim or support you in your case. You had a theory of that the angels could stick up for us on that day. Even that won't help. We'll see at the end of the surah how that comes apparent. Inna yawm al-fasl, the day of separation. Also on that day, the truth is separated from the falsehood. And the most graphic scene of separation that happens on that day is وَتَضَعُ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ حَمْلَهَا Literally the pregnant woman will drop her load, طضع, will drop the load, even if it's full term or if it's not full term. It'll just drop due to the overwhelming fee on that day. And she too will separate from her son or her daughter, the baby. And that's in, uh, in human instinct. The mother, it's the firstly what she's attached to is the baby as soon as he comes out. But because it's يَوْمَ الْفَصُلْ يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ She'll separate from the baby and the father will separate from his own wife, from his children. The brother will separate from his child, uh, from, from his other brother and so on. The day of separation, Yawm Al-Fasl. Allah says, Kana miqata. That day has already been appointed. It's a fixed time. Now, two things with this word miqata and what we learn from. Miqata means it's a fixed time. That means it's not going to move. And why he's saying the word miqata, what it's also depicting is that, O oh Arabs that live in the desert, that are now waging sarcasm at the Prophet ﷺ, those very same people that are denying the message of Islam, do you see how the sun has a fixed time? It comes from the east, it sets in the west, it's got a very fixed time. How the, sun, the day comes, the night comes, the evening, the afternoon, it all has a fixed time. Also, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Yawm Al-Fasl is a fixed time. There's, it's coming. And another thing in Miqata, the disbelievers now, they want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to react and to hasten. You know, if, if this is a true day, why don't you bring it forward? Why don't you bring it closer? And this is mentioned somewhere else in Surah Al-Anfa'al. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِن كَانَ هَذَا هُوَ الْحَقَّ مِنْ عِنْدِكَ فَأَمْطِرْ عَلَيْنَا حِجَارَةً مِنَ السَّمَاءِ أَوْ اِئْتِنَا بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ If this is true what you're talking about, and there's this day, then why don't you make the, the sky start raining onto us, some punishment, أَوْ اِئْتِنَا بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ Or bring this severe punishment that you're speaking about. So in other words, if Allah was to respond to them and react and to hasten, then that nullifies the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is Al-Halim. One of the names of Allah is Al-Halim. And we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be perfect in all His names and attributes. And from the perfection of Al-Halim, which means not to hasten, if Allah was to hasten, He would have punished us all. He would have got rid of us all. But Allah is Halim, He gives you time. So because Allah is Halim, He doesn't react and hasten to their comments. So Miqata tells you it's fixed, it's coming. I'm not going to rush it because you're saying, oh, this doesn't exist. You're going to come to the day, not the day coming to you. It's like, you know, in the airport, you're on those conveyor belts. Whether you move forward or you know, you're moving to your destination, you're going to get there. Not the plane comes to you or your bags come to you. You move to that. That's Gana Miqata. The day is fixed and you're walking to it. Whether you're moving forward or you're just standing still, you'll be moved to that day. Now the verses that are going to follow are going to describe in a bit of detail about Yawm Al-Fasl. What is Yawm Al-Fasl? This is the connection. The verses go on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yawm Al-Fasl is Yawm Yunfakhu Fi Sur." On that day, the breath will be blown in the horn, in the trumpet. And asur means a horn that the angel blows in. Allah says on that day, 
when the breath is blown into the horn, and here it's mentioning, it's talking about the second blow. There's two blows that happen in this horn. The first one is when everyone is destroyed, when everyone dies. And the second is when all the souls are placed in this trumpet. And then when the angel blows, all these souls will disperse and will go into their bodies. Each soul will go back to its body. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send rain onto the earth in which you will go straight into the ground. And the tailbone, that's what's left of you when you die, when, you, when you're finished, when you wither away, that will start growing. It will become you again. And then the soul is placed back into this body. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about this blow in the trumpet. In the trumpet. What happens as a result? You will all come as a result in multitudes, in armies, groups. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He speaks to them directly. He says, You will come forward in multitudes. And why this, this is important? Because in the very beginning of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not address them directly. He says, What are they asking one another about? And then now, he's saying on that day, when the breath is blown in the horn, you will come forward. Now there's a tool in the Arabic language in which when you want to show anger upon someone or at someone, you do not address them directly, and then all of a sudden you turn towards them. And you hit them by shock, by surprise. That's another way of depicting anger. So you find this in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in many places, for example, وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدًا They said that Allah has begotten a son. لَقَدْ جِئْتُمْ شَيْئًا إِدَّا You have come with a monstrous statement. You know, and this also happens in this world. For example, say the teacher walked into a class and there's like 500 students in the class. And he says, some of you have failed the exam. There's a serious exam that was just sat two, three days ago. And he says, some of you have failed. You, Ahmed, are one of them. You know, he's all, all caught by shock, by surprise. That's another way of depicting anger. So the same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he moves from third person to second person. They are asking one another, you will be coming on that day. Fourth. You'll be marching forth as a result of the breath being blown in the horn. فَتَأْتُونَ afwaja. Also, فَتَأْتُونَ has a very interesting meaning as well. And that means you'll come submitting, willingly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Fussilat, أَتَيْنَا طَائِعِينَ Talking about the heavens and the earth, that we've come, we've submitted to Allah azza wa The heavens and the earth say, that we have come in submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says on that day that the disbelievers, فَتَأْتُونَ afwaja. Ta'tun is giving us the understanding of that not only you'll come with arrogance just like you are in this world, rather that coming on that day is a different coming. You'll be coming and giving yourselves up, submission to Allah azza wa jal. And this is supposed to serve as a contrast for them. Now you're arrogant, you're full of pride, but on that day, you're going to come humble, fata'tun, in submission to Allah Azza wa Jal. But it doesn't benefit them, them on that day to come in submission to Allah. You need to submit to Allah now. Anyway, on that day, fata'tuna afwaja. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَفُتِحَتِ السَّمَاءُ فَكَانَتْ abwaba. The heavens will be open and it will become doors. What does that mean? In the beginning of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبَنَيْنَا فَوْقَكُمْ سَبْعًا شِدَادًا We constructed above you seven intense creation, seven heavens that are really strong. And now Allah is saying those very same heavens that are really strong and there's no wear or tear or rip or in within them right now. See Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He invites us in surah Al-Mulk. He says, 
الذي خلق السماوات الذي خلق سبع سماوات انطباقا ما ترى في خلق الرحمن من تفاوت فارجع البصر هل ترى من فطور الله invites us look at the heavens now look at the skies do you find any where any tear in it any rip now it's a perfect creation of Allah you're still not convinced ثم ارجع البصر كرتين have a look again and look a third time and a fourth time the only thing that will happen is يرجع ينقلب إليك البصر خاسئا وهو حسير your eyesight will return humiliated because it didn't find any flaw in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation so that very same perfect creation of Allah Allah is saying on that day it will be the most weakest of his creation so much so that now it's all ripped and torn it's become doors now the sky will become doors what does that mean you know in a construction the most weakest part of the construction is the door because it's got the hinges it opens it closes many times if a robber was to come and steal your house or to steal a building he won't come through the wall he'll come through the door in other words the door is the weakest part of a construction so by saying that the sky it becomes doors in other words it is the most weakest of creation now the same very heavens that you knew were the most strongest Allah has the ability to make it now the weakest so it becomes ripped in the sama on fatarat in shakkat yawma natwi sama it's folded it's gone there's no more sama and it becomes doors it becomes pathways for the angels to come down ويوم تشقق السماء بالغمام ونزل الملائكة تنزيلا Why does it become doors? Because now the angels are going to come down. Everyone is coming down. Everyone is going to be on this land. On this فَإِذَا هُمْ بِالسَّاهِرَةِ Which is going to come in Surah Al-Nazi'at. We're now all naked, barefooted, standing for many years before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes but now for that time everyone is just gathered وَفُتِحَتِ السَّمَاءُ فَكَانَتْ أَبْوَابَ and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the mountains just how he addressed the mountains before وَالْجِبَالَ أَوْتَادَ you also know on that day what will happen to the mountains وَسُيِّرَتِ الْجِبَالِ فَكَانَتْ سَرَابَ the mountains will literally move. Now, the verb suyirat, it talks, or it's a verb that's associated with something that moves very easily. Like you roll a ball, or you roll a marble, that's suyirat. There's no effort, no rush, no nothing, it just moves by itself. This is what will happen to the mountains. Now, the last thing that you'll expect to move a very easy move and a flowing move are the mountains. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day will make it move and roll like it's nothing. فَكَانَتْ سَرَابَ Then he adds an adjective. It becomes like a mirage. You know, if you're in the desert and you look all the way to where the eye can see, you'll find like something like water that's floating. But really, if you get there, there's nothing. That's the mirage. Allah says that the mountains will become mirage. You see them floating. You see it still. You'll see them sailing, moving. Really, if you get there, there's nothing. There's no mountains. That huge, enormous creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes carded wool. كَالْعِهْنِ الْمَنْفُوشِ Meaning كَالصُّوف كَالصُّوف الْمَنْفُوشِ Like carded wool, it becomes dust, it goes. And once that's off the world, then there's no pegs. إِذَا زُلْزِلَةِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا The earth will violently shake. Earthquakes will happen. وَسُيِّرَةِ الْجِبَالُ فَكَانَتْ سَرَابًا Now all these three verses that explained about the Day of Judgment are all got to do with كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ Now we remember we said كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ 
they'll soon find out on that day. Now these three verses explain that day. ثُمَّ كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ The second سَيَعْلَمُونَ is when they're in the hellfire. So now the verses that are going to come are going to speak about the second كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ We're mentioning all this so you can see the flowing discourse of the Qur'an. It's not going from one topic to another. It's all in one topic. It's a unified topic. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ جَهَنَّمَ كَانَتْ مِرْصَادًا This is the second time you'll get to know. When? At Jahannam. إِنَّ جَهَنَّمَ كَانَتْ مِرْصَادًا No doubt. Certainly, the hellfire has always been waiting in ambush. The word mirtad comes from rasada, which means literally to ambush. But it's used somewhere else in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says marsad. Marsad means try to ambush. Waqudu lahum kulla marsad. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the believers, try to ambush when you're in the wall. Waqudu lahum kulla marsad. But in this verse, Allah says that Jahannam kanat mirsada. It, is, it has been waiting to ambush. In other words, Mirsada gives the meaning of that this is the place ideal for ambush. It's designed with the only intent to ambush. That's all. That's why Jahannam was made. Just to ambush. Now who does it ambush? Allah says, It is for those that rebelled against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command. And interestingly enough, Allah says, لِلطَّاغِينَ now, you know that disbelievers, many other names are used to refer to them in the Qur'an. Al-Kafirin, Al-Zalimin, Al-Fasiqin, Al-Mujrimin. But he, Allah is saying, Lil-Taghir. In other words, what are we learning by the word al taghir Al-Kafirin, Zalimin, all these is on the outside. But Tughyan, Lil-Taghir is something that happens in inside. It's when you rebel against Allah's command, with a full heart. You know, you got no, no, no care about what Allah has told you. Absolutely no care. You're in denial. And the word tara means to just push the limit. You push. There's no limit to your sin. You know, just for example, Allah says, Talking about Nuh alayhi salam. He says, once it flooded, once the earth was in a flood, then your ship sailed. In other words, when, uh, when it just, it said it passed the limit. And Tughyan is that's it. You do one sin, it opens the door to another sin. And another sin, and you just don't know how to stop. You've exceeded that limit of Kufr, you've become in Tughyan now. Fir'aun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes him, إِنَّهُ طَغَى he, he just crossed the limit. Why did he cross the limit? Because he said, Ana Rabbukum al -a'la. I'm your Lord, Inna -a'la. this is too much. And even worse than this, he said, Ma alimtu lakum min ilahin ghayri. I don't know anyone that's supposed to be worshipped other than me. And even again, he says, Alaysa li mulku misr. I own, I have the kingdom in my hand. Three things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he ascribes for himself. Three things. Qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas. Malik in nas, ilah in nas. Rabb and Malik and ilah. Three things that Fir'aun also took for himself. Rabbukum al a'la, ma alintu lakum min ilah in ghayri, alaysa li mulku misr. That surah we're supposed to recite, inshallah ta'ala, when we get to it, will describe how it protects us from the devils, from the shaitan. And it is also teaching us that Fir'aun was a devil himself. Inshallah ta'ala, when we get to there, we'll explain even further. فَكَانَتْ saraba the, the mountains become sarab. They become a, literally a mirage. There's nothing there. And then Allah says, إِنَّ جَهَنَّمَ كَانَتْ مِرْصَادَ We said, مِرْصَادًا لِلطَّاغِينَ مَآبًا It ambushes those that rebelled against Allah Azza wa Jal's command. And it is a ma'aba for them. And ma'aba means a final place, a final abode, a final place. Now why the word ma'aba and not marji'ah? Because that's another word that could have been used. It's a synonym. But marji'ah always means that it's somewhere you go and come. Go and come. Just like in this earth. 
You'll go from here to the school, you'll come back home. You'll go from here to the shop, you'll come back home. From here to the masjid, you'll come back home. But Allah is saying, Ma'aba. Once you're in there, once you're in Jahannam, there's nothing called Ma'aba go back. You go back to nothing. You'll only be in there. And that's your Ma'aba, your final abode. لِلطَّاغِينَ Ma'aba. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala illustrates in this word, any time, every time they try to escape, they'll be sucked back in. كُلَّمَا أَرَادُوا أَنْ يَخْرُجُوا مِنْهَا أُعِيدُوا فِيهَا Every single time they try to move away, go out from where they are, Jahannam will suck them and pull them back in. This is their ma'ab. This is your final abode. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَا بِثِينَ فِيهَا أَحْقَابًا They will stay in this place for a very, very, very long time. This is Labifina Fiha. Now the word Labifina Fiha has two synonyms as well that are in the Quran. There's the word Uskun, which means to live. There's Ukhlud, which means to live. And there's Ilbith as well, which means to live. What's the difference between the three? So you can appreciate this one. Uskun will mean you're residing somewhere temporarily. That's why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Adam, He says to him, Uskun anta wa zawjuka al-jannah. Live temporarily you and your wife in paradise. Because Allah has decreed that he's going down. So that's Uskun. Ukhlud means forever. But Ilbith means for a very, very long time. So in other words now, by Allah saying, La bifina fiha, this possibly could give us the idea of that, yeah, maybe they'll spend many years there, but eventually they'll come out. That's what Labithin means. But Allah adds something that'll cut this doubt. Labithin afiha means a very long time, just like Allah says, وَلَبِثُوا فِي كَهْفِهِمْ ثَلَاثَ مِئَةٍ سِنِينَ Speaking about the people of the cave, He uses the word, وَلَبِثُوا They stayed for a very long time, that it, at the end equated to 309 years. Allah says, لَا بِثِينَ فِيهَا Very long time. How do we calculate this long time? He says, أَحْقَابَ أَحْقَابَ is the plural of حُقُب أَنَا حُقُب وَنْ حُقُب As the Mufassirun have commented, say that it is 80 years. That's one حُقُب, 80 years. Now, 80 years of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala counts, which is equal to a thousand of every day, is equal to a thousand years of what we count. That's one hukum. But Allah says they will remain in there. Ahqaba. So when one hukum is done, we start off another hukum. Another 80,000 years. Or 80,000 years. You know how Tormentful, that is, this is psychological punishment. Had you said forever, it would have been easier to say ahqaba. 80,000 years of what you count, once that's done, we're starting off another one. <coughs> and when the second is finished, the third is starting. That's, that is, the, there's nothing is more torturous than this one. Psychological torture, as well with physical torture. You know, just like you tell the kid, that's in trouble in class, stand on the wall, put your hands up for 10 minutes. You know 20 minutes, but you first tell him 10 minutes. It's 9 minutes, and then 10 minutes, he thinks it's all over, then another 10 minutes. And every single minute that's going to pass next is going to be like an hour. That's psychological torture. This is لَا بِثِينَ فِيهَا أَحْقَابًا Then Allah says, لَا يَذُوقُونَ فِيهَا بَرْدًا وَلَا شَرَابًا they will not taste therein no coolness nor any drink. Why these two things? Bardan wala sharaba, coolness or a drink? You know now, the, the pagan Arab, the Mushrikun in Quraysh are listening to this. And in, in their desert life, the two things they enjoy is coolness and drink. That's the two things you enjoy in a desert life. A, a cool breeze 
under shade, under a tree, and a really cold drink to have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying there, these two enjoyments that you have now, you won't see. They won't even taste. Subhanallah, this is how the, the punishment is being depicted. And you know the coolness? Subhanallah, you, you even don't even want to taste the coolness of Jahannam. In another place in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He describes the coolness of Jahannam. Allah describes a person that receives the least and easiest punishment on the Day of Judgment. I want to share this with you and then share with you the reaction, how this man reacts once he tastes this easy punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Anbiya, وَلَئِن مَّسَّتْهُمْ نَفْحَةٌ مِّنْ عَذَابِ رَبِّكْ لَيَقُولُنَّ يَا وَيْلَنَا إِنَّا كُنَّا ظَالِمِينَ You really want to know how cool a breeze in Jahannam is? Allah in this verse is speaking about someone that hasn't even got to the gates of the fire. He is so far away. And as a result, a cool breeze from the fire touches him, barely scrapes the surface of his skin. Nafhatun. Now in Arabic you have the two words nafhatun and lafhatun. With the noon, it means a cool breeze. With the lamb, lafhatun, it means a hot breeze. Allah is talking that this man is so far away from Jahannam that as a result, a cool breeze touches his skin. Now you know, just like the pot that's on the stove, obviously if you put your hand in front of it, that's hot air. It's hot steam coming out, it'll burn your face. But if you move away, then eventually that steam cools down. That's how far this man is from Jahannam, that a cool breeze hits him. And masatum, mas, this barely touches him. Min adabi rabbik, from the punishment of Allah. Not masatum nafhatu adabi rabbik, from the whole punishment, just a tiny ounce of the punishment. And this punishment, Allah is saying a cool breeze that hits him. You know what this man screams out? He says, Ya waylana inna kunna zalimeen. Woe to us. We have oppressed ourselves. But to go even deeper, this word wail is actually a valley in Jahannam. And wail, Allah, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he describes all of Jahannam put together. It's scared of wail. All of Jahannam put together, it's frightened, it's afraid of whale. <coughs> and this whale, it's Jibal ta'kulu ba'duha ba'da. Mountains, literally valleys that eat each other. That's how scorching hot it is. This man, if this cool breeze was to just barely touch his skin, he'll say, Ya Wailana, he already thinks he's where he's in the worst pit of the fire. This is the coolness. Allah says, لا يذوقون فيها بردة. That easy punishment won't even come their way. ولا شرابة. Not even any drink to have. إلا. Two pleasures taken away from them. Then Allah says, إلا. Except. And this except, it gives a sense of hope. And this is even worse. This is even more psychological punishment. Yet, what does Allah have to offer us? You want to know? Allah responds to these two things. Bardan wala sharaba. I'll give you something instead. I'll give you hamiman, which is boiling water. Really, really, this is water that has reached its boiling point. Then they'll drink it. Not as it's boiling. Tusqa min aynin aniyah. It's a spring that will only erupt, that will only flow out only when the water in there has boiled. And they'll drink it as it's boiling. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he describes that if the pot was to get close to his face, if a pot that's hot gets close to your face, then the only thing it will probably burn your skin. But here Allah says, minhu farwat wajhi. As soon as it's brought close to his face, the skin, the meat, all of it goes away. It melts. That's how intense it is. And then he's forced to drink it. 
Tusqa. Tusqa means he's literally his mouth is open and this water is poured in and it's boiling. Now when you drink water or when you drink hot water, when you drink tea for example, maybe it's hot at the beginning, but gradually as you're drinking it, it's getting cooler and cooler. Up until the end it's cold. And it's when it's in the body, it's not at 100 degrees anymore, it's gone down. But here when they drink it, it remains, it's, it consists with its temperature. كَالْمُهْلِ تَغْلِي أو كَالْمُهْلِ يَغْلِي فِي الْبُطُونِ It boils, it bubbled in the stomach. This is punishment. إِلَّا حَمِيمًا That's the only type of coolness they'll get. And another type of drink that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them is وَغَسَّاقَ غَسَّاقَ is pus, infected blood. Where's that coming from? All the people of Jahannam are getting punished. And all of them, that's what's dripping away from their skin. The pus, the blood, the infected blood. And as a result, that'll come down and will form it like a spring in the middle. And that's their drink. That's how they'll drink from this. And the food is mentioned somewhere else. لَيْسَ لَهُمْ طَعَامٌ إِلَّا مِنْ ضَرِيعٌ And the most common word of the food of the people of the fire is the word ضَرِيعٌ There's ضَرِيعٌ There's زَقُّوم There's غِسْلِينٌ ضَرِيعٌ is a type of plant that's thorny that's itchy Even animals don't eat because when they get close to it it pokes their skin and it makes them bleed That's the only food they'll have ضَرِيعٌ But when we come to Surah Al-Ghashia we'll explain it there so now the question is, man, this is really intense punishment. Do these people deserve what Allah is giving them? Is it really that much? Did they really disobey Allah this much in this world that they now deserve all this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers this question. The verses continue. Jaza'an wifaqa. Justice. Payback. You're getting what you worked for. We are not oppressing anyone on that day. This is exactly what you did. Nothing more, nothing less. This is exactly down to the microgram of what they deserve. Jaza'an. Wifaqa. Exactly. Nothing more, nothing less. Because wala yadhimu rabbuka ahada. Allah doesn't oppress anyone. And this, this verse becomes important when we speak about the believers and what Allah gives them. Now, another question that could come up is, but the disbeliever didn't disbelieve eternally. He didn't disbelieve for ahqaba. How come Allah is giving him now a punishment of ahqaba? Or maybe it makes sense that Allah punishes, the, punishes them for what? He lived 80 years, punishes them 80 years, then he's finished. Why does the punishment keep going forever? And uh, in the commentary of, uh, for Dr. Jamal, in his uh, Arba'in al Nawawiya, he comments, he's got something beautiful there, and he speaks about this issue. He said, because had they lived forever, they would have been on their disbelief forever. So they deserve to be in the fire forever. And the believer, on the other hand, had he lived forever, then he would have worshipped Allah forever. That's what Allah decrees. But because the life is cut short, that's it. It's a pretty clear image where everyone would have went in the future. So this one is in Jahannam forever. This is in Jannah forever. Now that the disbeliever could ask, what have I done wrong? Allah answers, <clears throat> They never hoped for an accountable day, for this day of reckoning. Now, something interesting as well, لا يرجون. Another word would have been لا يتوقعون. What's the difference between لا يرجون, لا يتوقعون? لا يرجون means they never hoped for this day. لا يتوقعون would have meant they never expected this day. Now, if you never expected this day, it means you never had an idea about this day. But Allah says, no, no, no. They had an idea. We told them about this day. But لا يرجون. Oh, you know what? I wish it doesn't happen. لا يرجون حسابا. We wish this doesn't come. 
And Allah tells the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ذَرْهُمْ يَأْكُلُوا وَيَتَمَتَّعُوا وَيُلْهِهِمُ الْأَمَلُ فَسَوْفَ يَعْلَمُونَ Let them eat and drink. Let them enjoy. And let their false hopes delude them. وَيُلْهِهِمُ الْأَمَلُ Soon they'll come to know. <coughs> and subhanallah, what's really sad is that you find this same idea, this same mentality amongst the Muslims. You come to your brother, you remind him, Ya Akhi, Wallahi, there's a day of dark judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge you for this, will judge you for the fear of Allah, Ya Akhi. You know, you owe me this much, give me my rights back. You just, you just don't want to hear it. This is, Allah is telling us, this is the mentality of the disbelievers. Every time they were reminded, they don't want to hear of it. Just don't worry about it, just change the topic, change the subject. لا يرجون حسابا because they never hoped for this day, what did it do? وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا كِذَّبًا لا يرجون inside, they never hoped. But that also translated to outside, <coughs> which is وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا كِذَّبًا They denied our miraculous signs, our miraculous verses. كِذَّبًا The worst of denials. See, the, the proper, the appropriate word that would have been used here in the Arabic language would have been وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا تَكْذِيبًا But كِذَّابًا is used to show how profuse their denial and their belying against Allah was. وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا كِذَّابًا Permanent lies. وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ أَحْصَيْنَاهُ كِتَابًا Now remember how they never hoped for a day of accounting. لَا يَرْجُونَ حِسَابًا Allah now addresses that issue. He says, وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ By the way, every single thing, as big as small as it is, أَحْصَيْنَاهُ كِتَابًا We've recorded it. كُلَّ شَيْءٍ أَحْصَيْنَاهُ This is a nominal sentence, a noun. Really in Arabic, sentences are supposed to start with a verb. So this, this, this verse is supposed to be, أَحْصَيْنَا كُلَّ شَيْءٍ كِتَابًا but when you bring the noun before, it, uh, it creates a shock. You're going to be shocked then that day that Allah has recorded every single thing you've done. <clears throat> Remember at the beginning their theory? Mukhtalifun, what was it? Ah, dear Allah is too busy controlling this, controlling this. How is he going to know every single minute detail, everything I've done? Allah says, ah, you'll be shocked. And not only Allah has remembered it and knows it, but it's أَحْصَيْنَاهُ كِتَابًا It's recorded. It's written in a book. And that's more positive that it's there. You know, like if someone, if your wife tells you, get me this, get me this, get me this, get me that, the list will go on forever. If you are trying to memorize it, you're eventually going to be confused. But if you write it and you have a paper, there's no confusion. It's all here. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the all knowledgeable, it doesn't need to be recorded. But it's recorded so you can be convinced. أَحْصَيْنَاه And الْإِحْصَى is different to عَدْ what, what do we learn from the word إِحْصَى as well? هُوَ الْحِفْظُ وَالْعَدْ It's to count something and also to protect it, to save it. There's a backup file just in case it's gone missing. It's archived. This is أَحْصَيْنَاه This is الْإِحْصَى الْعَدْ It's all counted and it's all saved. It's all protected. أَحْصَيْنَاهُ كِتَابًا In a book. Then Allah says, فَذُوقُوا فَلَنْ نَزِيدَكُمْ إِلَّا عَذَابًا The scholars say that this verse is the worst verse when it comes to the punishment. It is the worst verse that describes the punishment. فَذُوقُوا Then taste. We are not going to increase anything except punishment. You want an increase in something, it's only going to be punishment. Two things that the disbelievers in Jahannam will wish for. One, وَقَالُوا لِخَزَنَةِ جَهَنَّمَ ادْعُوا رَبَّكُمْ يُخَفِّفْ عَنَّا يَوْمًا مِنَ الْعَذَابِ Please, just tell Allah Azza wa Jal to reduce the punishment just one day. Just one day. How serious is it? In there they just want one day of relief. But they say, إِنَّكُمْ مَاكِثُونَ Dala, there's no one day. The only thing that's going to happen is the punishment is going to increase. 
it won't decrease, not even for a day. That day it will just increase. Another thing they wish for is an afidu alayna min al ma'. When when you're in in fire, the only your instinct will only take you to water, right? Because they're two opposites, fire and water. So the water they're looking for will be hamim, will be boiling water, right? That's what they're looking for, some water. Rather, they find that it's boiling. Another thing is they'll look up to the heavens and they'll say to the people of the heaven, "Afidu alayna min al mat." Send some water down. Subhanallah, this verb, this verb, afidu, it's giving us two meanings. It is depicting Allah's mercy and Allah's punishment. How? The verb afidu means when you have a cup and you fill the cup so much so that now what happens? It overflows. That's ifada, that's afidu. Allah is depicting His mercy, how much He's giving the believers. Their cups are full and now it's dropping. That's how full it is. These drops that are coming, you don't even need it. And it's prevented from where from going down to the kuffar. It, it, I mean, subhanallah, the mercy of Allah is being shown that the believers, their cups are full, so full that it's actually overflowing. There's no place for it in the cup anymore. And everything that's dropping, you're not in need of it. And so if you're not in need, how about give it to someone that's down? No, not even that. In Allah, So it's depicting the mercy and at the same time depicting punishment of Allah. That very same liquid you don't need, that fluid, that drink, it's, it's not even going down to the disbelievers. This is فَذُوقُوا فَلَنْ نَزِيدَكُمْ إِلَّا عَذَابًا Then on the contrary, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the second audience. The first were all the disbelievers. And remember in Surah Al-Mursalat, the surah before, وَيْلٌ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ لِلْمُكَذِّبِينَ Allah spoke what the final abode of the mukathibin is. And in that same surah as well, Surah Al-Mursalat, He said, إِنَّ الْمُتَّقِينَ فِي ظِلَالٍ وَعُيُونَ That the muttaqin are amidst shades and springs. Now also more detail will come about the second audience, which are the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ مَفَازَ Verily for the muttaqin, there is success. Now interestingly as well, Allah says, لِلْمُتَّقِينَ not lil muslimin, lil mu'minin, lil muhsinin, lil muttaqin. Why lil muttaqin as opposed to all the other names that the believer is known by? Because at taqwa doesn't mean only fi. At taqwa it depicts two meanings fi and protection. Fi and protection. And, and this beautifully connects with the beginning of the surah. <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying those who feed Allah azza wa jal and as, as a result of his fi, they did some action to protect themselves from Jahannam. I'll give you just a better example so you can understand this taqwa. You know, for example, you're at home at night and you hear some noise outside. You rush downstairs and you lock the door. Now, when you're locking the door, you're engaged in an action of fee, of taqwa. Sorry, You're engaged in taqwa. Why? Because you feed someone might come in and as a result, you protected yourself. You locked the door. That's muttaqid. A real muttaqin, a real believer, is someone that fears Allah Azza wa Jal when he hears the verses being recited and the verses of punishment. And as a result of this fee, he actually gets up and does something to protect himself from that day. And why does it beautifully connect? Because at the beginning Allah says, Ali Naba il Azim. And I explained to you how An Naba is different to Khabar. Naba is like you say there's a fire in the building which will demand from you an action. Move outside. Go, do something. Leave the building. So Al-Muttaqeen are those that have fear in their heart. And as a result, now by hearing these verses and what Allah has prepared for the disbelievers, there's some protection going to happen with them. So Allah says only those that fear Allah and work and do action, they will have success. إِنَّ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ مَفَازَ At the same time, this verse is a mercy towards the believers and it's a punishment to the disbelievers. Disbelievers are now listening and that's also psychological torture for them. Ah, oh, that's what the other group gets. We're not so lucky we didn't get what they got. So that's another punishment for them. Allah says مَفَازَ For them is مَفَازَ مَفَازَ 
he's giving us three meanings as well. Meaning success, and also it depicts to a place of success, right, Makan? And is Zaman as well, and a time of success. So they have success, they'll have a place of success, which is Jannah, and the time of success. What are we learning? Allah said, for them will be success. Allah is teaching us patience through this verse. Don't rush. Take your time in fearing Allah and protecting yourself. For at the end, I've stored for you mafaza. It's coming. You're being learned, you're being taught patience here. It will come. A time has been set for it. All you have to do is what you have to obey Allah's command and it will come. لِلْمُتَّقِينَ مَفَازَ Also, mafaza, it doesn't only mean to be saved from the fire. Because you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ali Imran, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازَ Those that have been moved away from the fire, you could be moved away from the fire, but doesn't mean you enter Jannah. It doesn't. Because you could, you could be on Al-A'raf. There's a mountain. That's in between the fire and the paradise. That's Al-A'raf. But that's not success. The true success is that if you're moved away from the fire and then enter Jannah. That's Mafaza. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hadaiqa wa a'naba. Gardens. Hadaiq is a plural. The singular is a hadiqa. You know, a hadiqa is a park. But hadaiq here means gardens. That are surrounded with beauty, with tall fences, that are private. No one has access to this park except you, to these gardens except you. Hada'iqa wa a'naba. Now, when you're in a comfortable place, uh, the pleasurous sense has been created. Now you want to eat something from your garden. Allah says, wa a'naba, and grapes. Subhanallah, why are the grapes mentioned as opposed to any other yani, fruit? Because the grape in and of itself, it is some sort of food, but 70% of it is drink as well. It's, it's a juice as well, it's a drink. So it's like A'naba is giving us the impression of food and drink at the same time. Wa A'naba. Now, Subhanallah, you just follow these verses and see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just creates an image. That we long for in this world as well. Now you've got your garden. You've settled in your garden. Tall fences. No one can see you. You don't see anyone. You, this is your garden. You're enjoying your fruit. Now, when you have all this luxury, you want to share it with someone, don't you? You do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَوَاعِبَ there's, there's a lot of lessons here to be learned. And that is, Kawa'iba literally translates to full breasted, gorgeous looking woman all over. Now, where did this word full breasted come from? So you can have an actual understanding of this word. Kawa'ib is a plural, the singular is Ka'ab. Ka'ib. Which comes from the word Kaab. Who knows what Kaab means in Arabic? Kaab. It's, it's the ankle. The ankle. The ankle. You see the ankle, how it shapes out? You see how it shapes out? This is where the word full breasted comes from. This is Kawa'iba at Raba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is basically illustrating in this word that they're, they're gorgeous looking. This is what you'll have Yawm Al-Qiyamah to share this kingdom. You're looking at your kingdom, your hadaiq. You're so excited you want to share it with someone. Allah is giving you Al-Hur al to share this with. at of comparable ages, equal ages. And uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he once passed by an old lady. And he said to the companions, the, the woman, old people do not enter Jannah. She said, even me, she said, even an old woman, no one enters Jannah. And so she got really worried and upset. And they told the Prophet ﷺ about this. Then he explained what he meant. And that is that 
No one enters Jannah and he's in an old age. We're all at the age of 33, the age of Isa, and at the height of Adam alayhi salam. All the inhabitants of the paradise are like this. Of compatible ages, equal ages. Now, this is the romantic side of the Quran. You're sitting in your garden. You've seen your kingdom. You've had from your grapes. You know, it's great, not food. You're not, not hungry. This is just the, I mean, to enjoy yourself. You're sharing your kingdom with this Hur al Ain. Now, when you sit in, uh, in like something like this, you know, that's how they depict it. Now, when they make pictures and so on, they got these two just newlyweds and they're holding these cups together, holding hands, you know, drinking from, from a cup. When you drink, then you're not you're not hungry you're just enjoying Allah says now they're with their their wives they're with these hur al ain and now more enjoyment on this Allah says wa ka'san glasses full of wine to enjoy in other words this is just creating the sense of enjoyment wa ka's in arabic literally translates to a cup or glass but in the classical arabic what it meant is that it's a glass that's full of wine. It's full of some sort of expensive drink, an exotic drink, that you only drink for pleasure. Now you know, when you own something in this world like this, and you have this kingdom of yours, your house, and you've sat and you've perfect, you know, you're married and all this, there could be a problem in the house. And that is, you know, your son is shouting at you, or you and your wife don't agree to each other, you could have the best mansion on this land, but inside the house there's chaos. It ruins everything you've got. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يسمعون فيها لغوا ولا كذابا. You will not hear within these houses, within Jannah, any ill speech or falsehood. None of this will be heard. In other words, there's peace in the house, in where you are in Jannah. And just before I can يعني, go to that, I just have to mention something about the woman in this world. And this is due to an amazing wisdom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not will for the woman of this world to be perfect. No woman is perfect in this world. So you will not find any woman except there's imperfection in, within. And why is this imperfection? Why does Allah create the woman in this world imperfect? They're not perfect. And this is supposed to serve as a tarbiyah for us, for the men, as a lesson. You should learn something from this. And that is that when you get married, and the Prophet ﷺ, he advises to marry the one that has religion, that has deen. Your wife, you should seek her help in getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't worry about the imperfection in her. You should be getting married just in the intention that she is supposed to help you get closer to Allah. Because now we're in a world, we're living somewhere where we have to work for Allah azza wa jalla's sake, where we have to work for this paradise. So if she's going to be your companion, <clears throat> then you better find someone that helps you get there. But because in Jannah, there is no work. Allah gives you perfect woman. You learn something. The perfection is there because now it's enjoyment. Here, the woman is not, not, that's not the first intention. It's not supposed to be enjoyment. It's supposed to be you're finding someone to help you get to the final enjoyment. And that's why some of the companions, when their wives would ask them, or keep, you know, I want this, I want this from the dunya, I want this, get me this, get me that. You know what he'd say? He'd say, I'd rather sacrifice you for her and not sacrifice her for you. In other words, if you're going to keep going, just go. I don't need this headache. <laughs> yeah, what? I'm going to uh, go down for what you want and eventually I'll lose the perfection there. No, 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 it's not worth it. The companions understood what Allah has saved for them. So as a result, they shouldn't play with their intention. Your intention, your, your only, only aim in this life is to just get closer to Allah Azza wa Jalla's mercy and paradise. 
if this wife of yours is not going to help you get there, what's the use? So that's why when you get married, that's not the intention. Enjoyment is nothing. The enjoyment is there. That's where the true enjoyment is. That's why Allah gives you kawa'iba at raba. That's why. Amma he knows. There's no kawa'ib. He puts imperfections in them. You know, whether it's manners, whether it's just the physical look, there's imperfection. So you cannot get attached to this woman and think this is the whole world is right here. You shouldn't get attached. Only, only the only intention is that you use and you, and you seek help. Make her as, as a help, as a guide for you to get to يعني, <clears throat> eventually what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made for us. Uh, inshallah ta'ala probably will stop here before we conclude. I'll finish these two verses. لا يسمعون فيها لغوا ولا كذابا That the inhabitants, the people of the paradise, will not hear therein any falsehood. لغوا is useless talk, senseless comments. You won't hear this because remember the beginning of the surah, the disbelievers, that's all they talk to the, to the believers. Wage sarcasm at them. This is not happening. This is false. So Allah says, you know, don't worry, bear patience now. But يوم القيامة you will not hear this. ولا كذابا and the disbelievers also used to lie, deliberately lie against those who talk the truth. Allah says, Wala kithaba. You will not even hear their foolish comments on that day. No denial, no nothing. There's peace from all this. They'll be burning, you'll be enjoying. Jaza'an min rabbika ata'an hisaba. What Allah has given you now in this paradise is jaza'an min rabbik. A reward from your Lord. Now when he spoke about the disbelievers, he said, Jaza'an wifaqa. Justice. Equal justice to what you did here. No more, no more less. But when it comes on the mercy side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's Jaza'an min rabbik. A reward from your Lord. Even the word min rabbik, it senses, it depicts, it illustrates Allah's mercy. Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I'm giving you this. Not min Allah, from Allah, from your Lord. Bringing you closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. It's like a king, I'll say, look, I'll take care of you, don't worry. Come, just paint the walls. This is a king talking to you. You tell him how much you're going to give me for painting your walls. Don't worry, I'll fix you up. This is a king that's going to fix me up. It means don't even worry about the price. Allah Azza wa Jal, he's saying to the believers, this is a reward from Allah. Ata. Ata is just giving and giving and giving so much so that you just say, I can't, I can't take it anymore. Enough. This is Ata Amir Rabbika, Jaza Amir Rabbika, Ata An Hisab. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes the conversation of the believers and what they get. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us worthy of His mercy and to make us from the people of the Quran, people that reflect on the lessons of the Quran. إنه ولي ذلك والقادر عليه وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين